Okay, so the reason we're making this video is not because I believe this is going to be the case. We're making this video because Grant McKegg went out there on Twitter, he had this thread that he went out and published, and it got a lot of Canadians fans up in arms with conversation, debates, and... It was such a big deal that I feel like I'd be doing a disservice by not talking about this in the first place. So, the Montreal Canadiens have themselves the first overall pick in the 2022 NHL entry draft. That is not new news. We know that it's more likely than not that Shane Wright is going to be the guy who hears his name called at the Bell Center with Canadiens fans chanting his name because that's just kind of the picture that I'm painting in my head. You can go ahead and tell me in the comments if that sounds right or not to you. But because Shane Wright is all that, because he's the projected first overall pick, what do we do as hockey fans and media when we see a first overall pick? We always, 100% of the time, find a way to challenge that sentiment. Even in drafts where the first overall pick was so above and beyond out of reach, we still had conversations saying, hey, what if the Oilers took Jack Eichel first overall instead? What if the Devils took Capo Caco first overall? Should Owen Power even be the first overall guy? What about Matty Beneers? There's always a conversation like this every single year, but, for all intents and purposes, let's just say that I don't think they have any merit to this one right here. Montreal is going to take Shane Wright, but according to Grant McKegg, former Montreal scout and current hockey Twitter personality, Shane Wright is not going to be that guy. Take a look at this thread he had back on May 15th. I've been saying this for several months now, but Habs fans really need to prepare themselves for the very real possibility that Wright won't be their choice at number one. This isn't just me on a solo hatchet job. Many NHL scouts and teams are on the same page. No, I'm not trying to destroy his reputation. I'm reporting what I'm seeing, and what I saw was not good. Wright was on the ice for 25 goals against in 10 playoff games, and he only scored three. Owen Beck, as a comparable versus stronger teams, had four goals against. So when you're talking about Shane Wright and Owen Beck, you have two draft-eligible OHL centers that played more than 21 minutes per game. One is expected to go first overall, the other is expected to go 20 to 35. The average point total for the last eight CHL players that went first overall was 121 in their draft years. Wright was 30 shy of that, and worse in the playoffs. And you know, even though I disagree with the extent that McKegg is going to to highlight why Shane Wright shouldn't be first overall, that individual point is one that I have brought up in the past as well. The fact that Alexi Lafreniere had 120-something points in the QMJHL as a first overall talent in 2020. You have previous guys who went first overall, like Nathan McKinnon, you have Neil Yakupov, you have Stamkos, Tavares... All these guys produce the lights out, not in the same way that Shane Wright had 90-ish points in his OHL season this year. Heck, even Marco Rossi and Cole Perfetti, two guys who did not go first overall in 2020, had much better numbers than Wright did this year as well. That's not one point that I think makes the entire argument, but I do think it is a point that he brings up that I do personally agree with. It's one point out of many, is what I'm trying to say here. You can blame Shane Wright's lack of production compared to other first overall picks on him having poor teammates, but that's a crock. First overall picks make teammates better. A draft-eligible center on his own team scored four more playoff goals than Wright playing six fewer minutes per game and was on ice for 12 goals against. This player that I'm talking about is a second rounder. I texted with several NHL scouts this morning, and none were complimentary. I don't know anyone who is comfortable with Wright being first overall from any organization, said one scout. The playoffs were his chance for redemption, and all he did was make it worse. Now, we did make a video talking about Shane Wright in his playoffs, talking about how he actually was used in a more defensive role than offensive, which is why he only had three goals in the two series that he played. And while I don't dispute the idea that Shane Wright underperformed in the postseason, I definitely don't think that the way McCagg is phrasing it makes this any better. I think he's really spinning it in a negative way that does not include all the context and that doesn't paint the entire picture in the most accurate way possible. He then goes out there and says that I will not have Shane Wright in my top three. People can freak out all they want. I really don't give a crap. I scouted him live seven times and on video more than 60 times. I have never scouted a player more, and there are serious concerns that really remind me of the Nolan Patrick draft. 
If I end up being wrong, so be it. The last time I had such major concerns about players who were deemed to be top guys were Neil Yakupov and Nolan Patrick, and as it turns out, ranking them top three was still too high. So I'm not doing it. No outside influence. Wait and see. You are going to see lists over the next two months that no longer have Shane Wright at number one. Maybe even most. I have never been afraid to be the first to drop a consensus number one. That was the case with both Patrick and Yakupov. I dropped Patrick from number one in November. I lost about 100 followers this week because a media guy tore into me for having the audacity to not fully be in love with Shane Wright and his sheep followed. Trust me, NHL scouts are not in love with Wright. I have no agenda. I want to get the rankings right. That's it. That's all. It's the last tweet that kind of sums it up over here. I was right about Miro Heiskanen, Jesperi Kotkaniemi, Jake Sanderson, and many others rising at the end of their draft years. I have several friends who are high-ranking NHL scouts. I'm tuned in. You don't have to believe me, but you should. Wright is not the consensus number one he's made out to be. End of rant. Now, I know we spent the entire video so far just reading Grant McCagg's Twitter thread, but I felt it needed to be fully established the entirety of what he was saying before we picked apart individual pieces and talked about Shane Wright as a whole. While Grant McCagg is a guy whose opinion is valued by some people in hockey Twitter, a lot will go out there and say that it's the way he presents it that makes him less than appealing. Sure, not having Shane Wright at number one is a fair opinion to have if you can back it up, but this doesn't really seem more like a backing it up rather than just saying, okay, look at the numbers, he didn't produce as well, plus I'm right and you're wrong. I feel like it would be a lot more valuable if we had more just concrete pieces of information that were spread upon here saying, okay, this is why Shane Wright is not the hottest talent in the book. Maybe it's the way that he processes the game. Maybe it's the projectability of his offense. Maybe it's the shooting ability not being as consistent as you would like it to be. As I said, there's context behind these things, and we talked about context in the previous video. Shane Wright was used in a more defensive role in the OHL playoffs, which says more to me about his two-way ability than his lack of offensive production when he only scored three goals in those series that he played. There were other players on the Kingston Frontenacs that were dealing with heavier offensive loads, and those guys went out there and got the points. To me, that's not necessarily a knock on right, nor is it a good enough reason to drop him from first overall. But if Grant McCagg is indeed correct, and Shane Wright does not go first overall by the time the NHL draft comes and goes, then I'll make a revisatory video saying that I was wrong and saying that Grant McCagg was right. I'm very fair in going out there and revising myself because I've done it before. I've made a ton of videos on this channel saying, hey, I was wrong about Brady Kachuk, for example. I was wrong about this player. I was wrong when I said that this guy would be like this. Hey, he's a lot better than what I thought. I'm always fair to do that. So for Grant McCagg and Shane Wright, I'll do that again if that does indeed become the case. But it is just kind of funny how at this point in the year, it's May right now as we're recording this video, we haven't seen any inkling of anybody potentially challenging right for that first overall spot aside from Logan Cooley. And Logan Cooley's a guy that everybody I've seen has at number two, number three. Some have him going a little bit later because, hey, David Yerichek's really good. Slavkovsky might jump up a little bit. Even though Logan Cooley is the only guy we have seen actually quote unquote challenge Shane right for that first overall spot. I haven't really seen him being locked up as a consensus number two either, which makes things very intriguing to me as to whether or not you're even going to say Shane Wright has any competition based off of reputation and what other scouts are saying about this draft. Now, again, Grant is saying that he has scouts in the NHL that are friends of his that are saying that Shane Wright is not the consensus number one. But all it takes is Montreal to go out there and say, screw that, we're taking Shane Wright for that entire idea to be disproven otherwise. Now, for sure, there are also other factors that could make things a little bit more complicated, like the fact that Shane Wright was an exceptional status player, he's in the same category as McDavid and Tavares and Sean Day, but he didn't produce like those guys did. In fact, Sean Day didn't even really produce, so that was a bad example to bring up. But for Shane Wright, you have to remember he also did have another year removed from his development. The entire 2020-2021 season did not see him play any hockey for the Kings and Frontenacs because the OHL did not play. He only played at the World Under 18s that year where he was really good, but still. Seven or eight games is not enough to suffice an entire draft minus one season. So at the end of the day, I do still think that Shane Wright will be first. I do think the Canadians are going to take him. I think they're going to have a good time taking him at the Bell Center. But there are indeed some doubters out there. 
Grant McCagg just happens to be one of the main ones, and I want you to tell me in the comments what you think about this. Do you agree with my sentiment of the situation that the Montreal Canadiens are going to take right at one? Do you instead agree more with the idea that Grant is bringing up that there's more concern than not to be brought up as to whether or not Wright is even going to be a top three pick? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you're a Canadiens fan, which I pretty much assume many of you are, who do you want to take at first overall? Is it Shane Wright? Do you want to trade down to third overall like we talked about in the previous video with the Arizona Coyotes? Would you trade the pick for a roster player? Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.